All right, another awesome strategy that I use all the time. And it's again based on market structure. New old resistance, new support, old support, new resistance, same thing. It's essentially a pullback strategy as well, but let's just talk about how I define the opening range. So a lot of people measure the opening range from the first five minutes of the cash open of the US markets. So 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9.35 Eastern Standard Time, there's just not enough data to make a quantifiable high probability <laughs> the trading decision based on just five minutes of data. And is probably one of the main reasons why this that particular strategy doesn't work over the long term, you'll end up losing money. So I, I actually measure this opening range that I consider to be the opening range from the, the low to the high from 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's the London action when the London market opens, to 30 minutes after the U.S. market opens, which is 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I track the high and low um, within that time frame. And we have the highs and we have the lows. We have the opening range high, the opening range low, and then we have a midpoint that denotes um, uh, if price is above or below, we could be bullish or bearish for the day. We at least see which way the momentum is going. Uh, so how we take, how we use this particular strategy for trade. So we want to see a break above opening range high, which is bullish. Uh, so we look to enter on the retest for a continuation move higher and simply taking, uh, typically I like to see a target on this trade, two thirds higher of the opening range, which is just, you can use a FIB. I have a study that does this automatically for me, but you can use a Fibonacci or tracement that has a 161.8 FIB extension. So you can get the two thirds move higher. So you can see where price could potentially go to take your profit. And then same thing with the bearish, the bearish opening range trade. You wanna see price break below the opening range low and enter on the retest. And then the negative 61.8 FIB extension will be your target, which is two thirds below that opening range. So to better understand what I'm talking about, let's take a look at a bullish opening range breakout example. So you can see that that cloud, the cloud is actually what's measuring the price action from 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's the London to the US market cash open. So you have the opening range high and then you have the opening range low. The opening range high is denoted by that green line at the top of the cloud. The opening range low is the red line at the bottom. And you also have a white dash line in the middle, which is the midpoint of the opening range. And as I mentioned, price if price is oscillating between that midpoint, it's more than likely we're just sideways and chopping around. But as we break higher or lower, that will give you the sentiment early on before you before price takes off, breaks up above the opening range high or breaks below the opening range low. But let's take a look at this example for a bullish trade. We do have a this yellow box here is a consolidation where price is trading back and forth between until about halfway through the trading day, we finally get a push higher, we start making higher lows, and we finally break out of that rectangle to the upside. And we break above the opening range low, or excuse me, the opening range high, right there circled in the, that white oval, and on increased volume as we broke above that resistance. So we would look to enter a retest. You can buy the exact opening range high, but it's good to give yourself a couple ticks a little bit higher just in case you don't get filled. We want, there's our zone right there. We look to be buying in this area for a push higher. So our entry would be more or less in the middle there. Um, a little bit higher than the opening range high and put our stop below the, that market structure just in case it doesn't hold, we don't wanna be in the trade anymore. So after we're entered into the trade, our main target is that light blue line, which is two thirds above the opening range, which gives us our target, which is on this particular trade, this is on the ES S&P 500 futures is around 28.34. So we look to take profit there. 
now let's take a look at a a bearish example of a opening range break uh not breakout but i would say breakdown example so again that cloud is the opening range and we have the opening range high the low and the midpoint um, so you can already see that price action is pretty bearish we're making lower highs lower lows even before the market opens so all of globex is more or less chopping around but it's continuing to go lower especially uh, five minutes before the U.S. market opens. And as the first candle on the U.S. market, that op uh, first candle after the U.S. market opened was pretty bearish too on strong volume. And then you can see that red opening range line, opening range low. Once price slices through on strong volume, uh, simply we're looking to enter on the retest after we broke that low. So where would our entry and our stop go? There's our resistance. It used to be support, but now it's resistance because we significantly pierced that level in a bearish way on decent volume. So we look to enter. Once that doji candle forms, let me go back. Let me go back one. There's a doji candle um, right between the green one and the first red one on the push down. Just in case you can't see it, it's right here, that guy. So it's a nice doji candle that's indecision right out of resistance and old support near resistance. And we'd look to enter once we see that candle close and we wanna put a stop just above there. I'd like to see a stop just above that first, that candle that actually broke the opening range low. Do you wanna have a stop above that high and then once we enter the trade, we want to take our first target at the two thirds extension lower. And then if we have clearly the price just sliced right through it, this was a really strong bearish momentum day. And if you're still in the trade after hitting your first target, then you just trail it down until you see some kind of significant reversal or like a higher low forming, which in this case, you can see right here, since you know market structure now, here's a higher low from this one, and you can see the bulls showed up. So right now you'd be looking to go long and get out of your short once you see this. You don't wanna be in that short anymore.